Hello, welcome to the course on mobile computing. In the course on mobile computing, we will be using Android operating system. And in order to develop Android applications, you need to have a very good knowledge of Java programming language. Therefore, in the beginning of this course, we will devote few lectures for understanding Java. If you have already done Java, then you may choose to use these lectures to revise your concepts. If you have not done Java, then please use these lectures, do the exercises and also learn Java on your own before we start with Android programming. So let's start with our first lecture on Java. Java originated in late 1995 and it was released to public in 1996. At that time it was called Oak. Since then there has been 9 major releases. Current version is 8. You may download the latest Java software development kit from Oracle website. And you may start programming in Java right away. More than a programming language, Java is actually an execution platform. You may have already heard the term called Java Virtual Machine. Java Virtual Machine provides a platform to run Java programs that you develop. Java Virtual Machine is also instrumental in making sure that once you have compiled a Java program, you can run it on different types of platforms. You will learn more about Java Virtual Machines in next lectures and also your experience of Android programming. This is a simple chart showing evolution of Java language. Since starting the Java language in 1996, Java has grown tremendously. As you can see that the initial version of Java only had around 211 Java classes, while the current version of Java has around 4240 Java classes. This is tremendous growth and this has made sure that Java remains a very valuable programming language for today's programming scenarios. Java has several features. I will go through the basic features that were pointed out in the white paper released at the time of the release of Java. Simple, object oriented, distributed, robust, secure, architecture neutral, portable, interpreted, high performance, multi-threaded and dynamic. At the time of the Java release, we had the programming languages like C++ available for us. While C++ allowed us to use object oriented programming concepts, Java mandates it. In Java, it is not possible to create a program that is not using object oriented programming concepts. This makes Java program easy to understand and easy to extend. Java from the very beginning also supported distributed programming by providing several libraries which enable socket programming. Java virtual machine ensures that Java program can run on different architectures. Java also has a catchphrase of compile once run anywhere. Java programs are portable, they can be taken to different machines. The Java virtual machine then interprets those programs and runs it. From the very beginning, Java supports multi-threading and Java programs are optimized for high performance. You will learn more about these features when you start programming Android applications or from your past experience of programming Java, you may have already experienced some of these features in action. You may have also heard terms of JDK, JRE, JVM. JDK or SDK refers to the development kit that is available for you to write Java programs. JRE refers to the runtime environment that is needed to run Java programs. If you only want to run Java programs, you don't need JDK or SDK. However, if you want to build your own Java programs, you will need JDK or SDK. Java Virtual Machine is the platform that runs the Java programs. For example, when you compile a Java program, all you create is what is called Java bytecodes. JVM takes those Java bytecodes and runs them on a given platform. Java has this catchphrase of compile once run anywhere. Let's see how that helps in writing programs that are executable on different architectures. Whenever you write a Java program, Java compiler 
changes it into Java byte code. And then those Java byte codes are ready for execution on different platforms by using JRE. As a programmer, you need not to worry that on what platform your Java program will run. This is unlike C++, where behavior of a program may be different from one platform to another platform. This is a simple structure showing how the Java program lives on a given machine. You may have a hardware. On top of the hardware, you may have different OS, for example, Linux, Windows, or Mac operating system. You have a different JVM for different operating systems. And then you have Java programs. As a developer, you write a Java program, and then JVM hides all the complexities of the underlying operating system and hardware from you. So as a programmer, you need not to worry whether your program will run on a Mac machine or your program will run on a Linux machine. Your program will behave exactly the same as it would on one platform to another. This is a major feature of Java for why it was chosen to be the programming language for Android operating system. As you may already know that Android phones are built by different manufacturers and they come with different hardware specification. However, Java makes sure that once an app has been developed and compiled, it behaves almost same on all these different mobile devices. After you have downloaded Java on your platform, you will have to set the path correctly so that your system can recognize Java programs. In Windows operating system, in Windows operating system you do it using environment variables. In Linux, you do it by setting bash rc or csh rc files or other shell files that you may be using. You can test your settings by running java dash version command. Let me show you a quick example. This is the command prompt of a Windows machine. If I type java version, it displays the latest Java SDK that is installed on my machine. You may find it difficult to read, so I will read it for you. Currently, it says Java version 1.8.0 underscore 92. That means that I have SDK 8 installed and with the update 92, which is the latest update. You may get a different value depending on the SDK that you have installed. However, I advise you to install the latest SDK. The current SDK release it is 8 and therefore, if your Java dash version is showing any value less, then please update it to the latest SDK. You may download Java SDK from the Oracle website. Once you have downloaded it, you may set those values in the control panel. You may choose to go to systems, go to advanced system settings, go to environment variables. Take your path and make sure that your Java library is available. So here you can see that my JDK directory is available in the path. Once you have installed Java, run the Java dash version command and see that your program can recognize where your Java is installed. Once you have installed Java, run Java dash version on your shell and check the value. If it displays the latest SDK that you have installed, then you have correctly installed Java. If it does not, then try to check your installation. There are several websites available which tells you how to install Java, including the website on the Oracle, which currently owns Java. I hope you have successfully installed Java. Now let's go and try to understand what Java programming language is. Let's first start with the Java naming conventions. Java is a case sensitive language, which means that small and capital letters, even though they may refer to the same word, means different for Java programming language. In Java, hello world written with a capital H and capital W is different than hello world written with only one capital word. Java uses a naming convention which makes sure that programmer other than you can understand your program easily. For example, in Java, we name each Java class with a capital letter starting and every time we, when you, we use a different word, we use a capital letter. So if I have to declare a Java class 
by hello world i will use h as capital and w as capital all the methods in java start with a small letter but if it is a combination of different words then the second word is start with a capital letter so a main is all a small while display result starts with a small but then result is a capital r variables follow the same naming convention as method and constant use all capitals if you don't follow the naming convention java compiler will not stop you however other java programmers may not find your program very readable i advise you to go through the detailed java naming convention which are given on oracle website under java documentation and use the naming convention for your program let us see a simple java program that you may run before running java apart from jdk i advise you to also install an ide ide stands for integrated development environment there are different java ide's which are available a popular ide is intellij another popular ide is eclipse or netbeans and for this program we will be using intellij ide which is also the base ide for android studio that we will be using later for developing android applications i have already installed intellij on my system you may find intellij on internet available for download This is the IntelliJ IDE which allows me to program Java and also run Java programs. Let's create a new project. As you see that IntelliJ gives me a choice of creating different type of projects. We want to create only a Java project for the time being. I have chosen the SDK that is installed. i would like to create a project from template a template only make sure that the basic functionalities are there i will need to write all the extra functionalities that i need for my program i give a name let's give the name first demo you will see the base package i have defined as in.ac.replytd.npt the package makes sure that your java programs is stored in a corresponding directory structure now intellij has created my basic program this program has nothing but a simple main class with a single main function i can run this program but as you can see the program doesn't do anything except compiling and finishing now let me write hello world here so that we can see hello world being displayed to display anything in java we use the method called system.out.println in java we end every line with a semicolon now your java program is ready to display hello world and here you see so you have created your first hello world program in java using intellij ide if you want to use another ide such as eclipse or netbeans that is fine however for this program we will only support intellij ide congratulations you have built your first hello world program in java we end this lecture now in the next lecture we will learn about java fundamentals thank you